Hey, Keith here. You know, I've been working on uh, getting my pack weight down uh, throughout the later part of the summer and fall and now here into early winter. And basically there's two ways of doing that. One is to just get rid of everything and be uncomfortable or uh, spend a little money and get some uh, high-tech, lighter weight stuff. And over the past six months, that's what I've been doing. So, uh, I want to take a few minutes to show you uh, one of the big three, which is your shelter, your backpack, and your sleeping system. And so we're going to look at one of those. Here we okay. go. Okay, today we're going to look at one of the big three, and that is shelter. Uh, what you can see here is my small ground cloth, my tent, my trekking poles, and my little cordage bag which has my stakes and uh, the uh, footprint for the tent. Alrighty, those of you with a keen eye notice that my tent has changed. Yep, that was a duplex. Z-Pex duplex. This tent comes in at 20.5 ounces. That's my actual weight of my tent. Uh, I was using the Lanshang 2, and it was 39 ounces. So, you know, uh, what a savings. The savings of 19 ounces. That's a lot. So, what I'm going to do today is set the tent up. I'm not going to go into how to set it up. If you want to see a really good way and the way that I set it up, and that is uh, look at Bigfoot's uh, channel. He's got a great setup video on how he sets up his tent. Uh, and then, of course, you can always go to Z-Packs. They've got a really good tutorial video as well. So, here we go. Okay, Z-Packs says you do not need a ground cover or a footprint with the duplex tent. However, in my opinion, why not just put an extra layer there? It keeps the tent clean, it keeps it dry, and for the weight, it, you know, it's, it, it's well worth it to me. What this is, is a piece of polycro, and for those of you that don't know what polycro is, that's basically window film. It's the uh, insulation that you tape to the inside of your window and then take a hair dryer and uh, heat it up and it gets real smooth and tight and it uh, provides insulation for your windows in the winter. Uh, this stuff is extremely lightweight. That piece there on the ground, which is 84 uh, inches long by 44 inches wide and it comes in with my little stuff sack at less than four ounces so to me well worth it okay there you have it my setup time was somewhere between uh, four and five minutes and that was the sixth time I've set it up I set it up once uh, whenever I got it and unpacked it and then I've used it four nights on the trail on two separate weekends. And this, like I said, was the sixth time that I've set it up. It's uh, an unbelievably nice tent. What I want to get uh, and show today is some of the uh, finer points I've watched several videos and there's some things that they don't address and some that they do. Basically what I want to do is just uh, take a look at the finer points of this outstanding tent. Okay, here we go. Now let's start here on this end and talk about the vestibule. There's one exactly like it on the other side. You notice one of them is a little longer, folds down and the other one comes up under it. What that's for is so if you're getting wind and you don't want the wind to get in the tent, you set it up so the wind comes this way and it just basically blows right past the vegetable. That way you can have the other side open and get ventilation. Uh, it has a toggle here, which lets you batten down the hatches in case there's a uh, heavy rain or wind condition. And uh, let's look at some of the other configurations. Okay, one of the things that I noticed that nobody really talks about is how do you really, if it's cold out and there's a lot of wind, can you really batten down the hatches enough to keep the wind out? What I've done is I've just loosened this. And you can see that allows this to pull 
all the way in. And then what you can do is you can unsnap it there and actually pull it all the way against it. And it's just like the uh, old tents that we had back in the 70s where the door is completely closed and there's not going to be any wind getting in there. You're still going to have some ventilation because of the side vents. Uh, but, you know, I I've said it a, a lot about this tent and I will continue to say it. It was well thought out. All right, next you can see how you can uh, open one of the doors. And what's great about this is the other side is exactly like this side. They're just mirror images of each other. So you can, which, depending on which way the wind is blowing, you can either have where the air is in the summer catching inside that right there and then moving on into the tent to keep you nice and cool. Or you can do just the opposite when the wind's coming from this direction in the winter and that still provides ventilation but yet it keeps the wind off of you now of course when it's raining or it's uh, blowing really hard you'll just want to batten down the hatches and then here you have it when it's completely open and you can imagine if you open the uh, vestibules or the doors on both sides you've got tremendous ventilation you can see out, it's, it's nice. Uh, I'm gonna talk about how they combat condensation with this tent. It's probably one of the most unique designs out there. And uh, to be perfectly honest, it works pretty damn good. Okay, when I was first looking at this tent, I was pretty nervous about the, uh, the way the door is set up, where it zips from the center at the top to the sides and then the actual door itself, the mesh lays down on the on the inside of the tent. I was nervous about sitting on that, but you know what? It has been zero issues so far. The zippers work very well, very easy, and you have a tremendous amount of room when you uh, get in and out. All right, there's what I was talking about. It's got the, uh, the mesh just right on the ground, but it's actually, I thought it'd be in the way and it's not. So let's take a look inside here. First thing you see is that the bathtub floor that goes all the way around this is extremely high. It's like eight inches tall. Uh, there's reports on the internet of people waking up basically floating in this because there's an inch or two of water underneath them um, and they stay perfectly dry. This tent has the mesh storage bags on each side. And there is my little repair tape that comes with it. And that's one of the neat things about this. If it gets a puncture or a whatever, you can fix it immediately with that piece of tape and it won't come off. So that's really cool. All right, I'm gonna get inside. Okay, one other thing about this uh, bathtub floor. This floor is not pinned. In other words, it's not staked out the way the floor on the Lan Shang 2 was. So it has, the ability to move um, so what you have to be careful of and it is one of the only uh, negative comments that I've heard about it uh, is that if you are on a slant and you allow your feet to slide down and push this it can actually slide the whole slide the whole floor and put it up against here and then condensation can run down into the the, the floor of the tent. The other issue is if you push it really far like that, then water can actually run off of the tent and into the floor of the tent. So that's the only thing you have to be careful with on this tent. And uh, yeah, good quality, good tent. Okay, let's check out the vestibule. We'll just open up the far side here. Oh, finger in the way. Okay, you can see you've got quite a bit of room. It's probably 30, 32 inches. And uh, you've got plenty of room to put a wet pack out there, your wet boots, whatever you need. And, uh, you know, you've got one of these on either side. So uh, th th this tent's really been thought out. Uh, you, for one person, you've got plenty of room to pull your gear inside with you. You can squeeze two people in here, but you... Uh, better want to be really close to the other one uh, But for one person on the trail in all types of weather conditions, I believe that this uh, this is gonna work great All right, 
This tent is seven and a half feet long from end to end. So that gives you quite a bit of, uh, of room between your head and the wall of the tent and your feet and the wall of the tent. I tend to sleep at a little bit of a diagonal, which then gives me even more. So that's pretty cool. You see the tie out there that actually lifts the tent further up and away. Now that system that I was telling you about that keeps the condensation down. Let's say that that you are in a uh, moist atmospheric condition that there is very little wind. You're going to get condensation. There's no way around it. So what they've done is they have made it where any condensation that gets on this tent, if it builds up enough, it will literally run down the sides and out through here and never get on the inside. See the mesh right there? See how that works? That's just uh, a design feat that's amazing. And, and it works. I haven't been out to where uh, it was running all the way down yet. I have had a little bit of condensation. So I pack a, a quick dry camp towel, wipe it off, and within you know two or three minutes it's dry. So let's see what else. Something else that I noticed that they haven't talked about. If you look at the very top, I don't know if you can see it or not, but on each side there's a loop. And you can hang your light there or you could run a string all the way across at the top of the tent to hang wet socks or whatever you might want. So, like I said, I wasn't going to go into great detail on setting this thing up, but I did want you to see the particulars of it. Look at the quality that you have. Um, this thing is not only sewn, but then it's taped and reinforced. Dyneema, of course, is the ultimate in fabrics, and it is just a fantastic tent. So, I guess officially, Trail Medic has gone to ground. Uh, the hammock just hurts my knee so bad that I just uh, don't get any rest. So, uh, that has what has forced me back to the ground, and to be perfectly honest, with a tent like this, the ease of setting it up, it's extreme lightweight. Uh, why not? It's uh, made a big difference for me. So, I'm not going to get rid of my hammock. I'm not going to get rid of it because there's going to be opportunities to use it. And uh, so, that's where I'm at. I hope this has helped a little bit. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. Be sure and subscribe. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you on the trail. Later.